Reef DVM's coming at you with kind of an easy project. It's our do-it-yourself easy clean goat feeder. Um, and I like to make it out of just green treat and uh, cedar that we have laying around the barn. Some people have asked us in the past how we um, keep our goat feeders so clean. Well, we make them so they can tip over <laughs> on purpose. So you can buy goat feeders. Um, they range anywhere from, you know, 100 bucks at Fleet Farm to five, $600 from Seidel. And they're very, very good feeders. I have no problem with them. But if you take a couple pieces of green treated or cedar wood and, you know, you make some, some legs um, out of some two by eights and then, you know, just stand them up like this. Um, I like to make the legs um, probably about, you know, four feet tall and Oh, those little feet at the bottom are about three feet. My daughter Tabitha here, she really likes uh, working in the shop. Um, all the girls do, um, Anna and Julia too. But Tabitha's with me today and, you know, she's going to screw one of these together so that I can kind of film it and show you what these look like. These have been really good for us. Um, I'd highly recommend making them. So basically you got, you know, kind of two legs with bases on them and then just a support board across the top. Um, I cut myself uh, a two by six for the bottom of the trough, or I guess I should say the, the sides of the trough, two of those, and then a two by four in the middle, and then um, that'll make the trough and we'll make it swing. As far as, you know, structural support, I don't know, our goats weigh several hundred pounds, the does, and they haven't ever wrecked one of these, so it works great. Um, once I, you know, just put it on the table saw and cut an edge to the two by four, I take the two two by sixes and uh, have Tabitha screw it uh, onto them to kind of make like a bunk for the feed. You know, it's, uh, you know, anybody's preference as to how long you want to make one of these. But obviously, the longer you make them, the stronger the, the swivel point needs to be. I particularly make them about six, six feet long. And when I make them six feet long, um, a big um, like Spax or lag bolt um, can work really well drilled in the end here um, to help these things rotate. And I find that works really good. A six foot long goat feeder probably can do, give or take about eight to 10 goats, especially in the boars that are, you know, a bigger size goat. I'm sure if you're doing like, you know, littler goats, like pygmies or something, you probably um, increase that quite a bit. And the nice thing about this kind of feeder is you can set your own height when you build it. Um, I put it so that this 2x4 that I'm drilling into here, the base of that's at 15 inches. That works really well for me for the does. And I like that height because when you get the, well, I would say 12 to 14 week um, kids, they're tall enough where they can just start getting in it and using it too, which is, which is really nice. Um, I do drill a nice oversized hole um, to let the spacks rotate on. I've learned in the past that you know, you don't want it too tight because, you know, if it gets snow and ice or any rain in it, you still want it to be able to turn. So once I get this in, it should be pretty nice, loose, and sloppy, as you can see. That That's what you want. You just want it to just kind of bounce around in there. So that way when you screw it into the actual trough, it can just freely rotate. Um, so here I'm, dr I'm drilling out the other end of it, and then I'm going to screw this trough together. So basically, again, this is a 2 by 4 in the center. The two two by sixes up the side, um, and then you know about a six inch uh, spax leg here going into it, and then once it's into it, it's gonna freely rotate, and then I'm just gonna put a couple of uh, carriage bolts to hold it in place when we want it in the up position. Now when we feed nine goats; they're done in like 15, 20 minutes. We pull the pins, the thing flips over. Any rain, snow doesn't get on it. All the you know, material from their hooves, from standing in it or on their, on their, you know, coats or any extra corn that's in, all just dumps on the ground, which is really nice. And then they can clean it off the ground if they want. And then the next morning we come back out and flip it over. So you can see here kind of how it works. I'm going to see if she holds still here for me. She's, she's a little new at the camera, but as she works it here, you can see it just flips over and then flips back. And you can flip either way. doesn't really matter. I find these things work absolutely wonderful for my goats. Um, like I said, they're always empty. They're always clean when I want to feed them. It doesn't matter how much snow we get or how much rain. I can go out and flip it over and feed them. So there's at least the principle of the design. Now I'm just going to put the um, anchor points in with some carriage bolts and 
I'll show you how we do that quick. All right, so here I am. I've kind of marked, you can see these lines where I took a pencil and marked where it is when it's in the up position. I drill a couple nice holes in it. And then I'm actually going to put it back into the up position, make sure the level's on it, try to get as level as I can. And then I'm going to go back through those holes I just made, and it drills holes into those 2x6s so that I can put the bolts to stop it from turning. I find one single bolt stops this thing from turning. I put all four in, two on each end. I guess just for redundancy and, you know, ease of which side you're on to be able to grab it to lock it in place. Um, but again, actually just one bolt will hold this thing in place with the goats. goats. You can see I got a little bit of a gap there. You want that gap so that, you know, in case a piece of feed or something gets in there, you can still rotate it. You see the gap better on this view. And I just kind of oversize the holes a little bit, make sure they're smooth enough for the carriage bolts I have. I'll rotate it back up in place. And these carriage bolts are too long, so I will cut them off. As I find the spot where it goes in, I just shove them in. I'll probably ream that out a little bit more just so it's a little easier to get these things in. And I just take a, a simple piece of chain. I've got a couple pieces here in the barn. And I bang the bolts into them. <laughs> um, nice part about that is then you don't lose your bolts. Goats tend to play with things. You know, that way if they try to play with this at all, I don't have to go around searching for where my carriage bolts went. I'm kind of spreading the links here by doing it, but when you bang these things in this way, it works out nice. They stay in, they're nice and tight. Oh, don't get me wrong, these little suckers will rust, even though they're zinc coated, you can buy galvanated too. Um, but they will rust over time. I never had a problem with them holding up. They just look a little uglier after they've been out in the field for a year or two. And I just drill a small hole just above the um, uh, center bolt. And um, we screw it in with a, an eye. So my daughter here is going to take an eye that's in the middle of the chain that we put in the middle of the chain. And then that stops us from, you know, putting the bolts in the pocket or, you know, forgetting to hang them up or something like that. That way they're always on the device when we want them on the device. And that's, it's easier for us to find them. And I've never lost a pair this way, which is good. I'll probably put this feeder inside the goat barn. Um, but I've got one out in the field here that's been working for a while, so we'll go out and show you that one and show you, you know, actually working. So again, I gotta, I gotta trim these bolts a little bit shorter. They're, they're way too long, but, uh, I'll do that, do that, and then we'll quick file the ends. There it is. She's got it together. It's pretty much ready to go once I shorten those bolts. We'll be ready to put this one into uh, into operation. There's my son Grant here. He's helping Anna, and they're filing off the heads of the bolts. Sure takes a little longer when you let the kids do the work, but, you know, only one way you're going to learn. Do it yourself. So here I've got the bolts shortened. Uh, my wife here is going to stick them in. I'll leave them stick out maybe only about an inch. You can always grab the chain to pull them out, which makes it easy. And it's locked in place. Now you can stain this if you want. You can certainly paint it too. Goats don't seem to care. Since it's all made out of a cedar trough with, you know, green treed legs and not really caring about it. So I just take them outside. So this one's been out all winter. As you can see, it's doing really well. There's a bunch of goats around it. <laughs> They're waiting for us to feed them. It's in the down position right now. So the girls come up. They swing it in the up position. They put a couple bolts in it. For the sake of argument, they have all four bolts in it today just because I'm filming. They dump the grain in, and the goats just go right in and eat. As you can see, they will stand on it at times. There's my son giving them hugs. See if we can eventually get him to back out of the picture here. He just likes to hug the goats. The goats are really friendly, especially these does. And they all just eat out of the trough and 
you know, 15 minutes later, they're all going to be done eating. And when they're done eating, we just walk up. Typically, I have one or two pins in on one side only. I pull the pins. It flips over. Any little extra that's left falls on the ground. They quick eat that up, and we're good to go. Um, you know, typical goats, they don't they don't leave much. They don't waste, which is a good thing. But now this way with the trough in the upside-down position while we're inside the house all day long, number one, they're not climbing out and wrecking the inside of it. And number two, um, any rain or snow falls out of it. And, of course, any dirt they put in it falls out of it. Um, the goats typically, once it's in the down position, don't like to stand on it because it rotates. They don't like that rotation. So I found they've left it alone. These things work absolutely great. I highly recommend you build one if you'd like. So here the girls are just going to quick pull the pins. Like I said, we had all four in just for the sake of the demo. We flip it over. We just leave the pins hang. And the goats pretty much just leave it alone. They know the food's done. Now they just kind of surf the floor a little bit to see if they, they missed anything. And uh, that's our do-it-yourself um, easy clean goat feeder, folks. Please like or subscribe and follow us. That's how you guys show support for us and how it keeps our channel afloat. Thank you.